go. Hi, I'm Don Caster. This is uh, Five Minutes With, and today I'm chatting with Nate Thompson uh, from Assessment Systems. Nate, tell us a little bit about yourself and your company. Thanks, Don. Uh, Assessment Systems uh, is uh, a dedicated to application of advanced psychometrics and like adaptive testing, item response theory. Um, we've got software for psychometric analytics, but we've also got online assessment platforms that manage the entire process from uh, item baking to test delivery to analyzing the results afterwards to starting the cycle over again. Great. And I myself am a psychometrician, uh, so I wasn't trained on the software side. I was trained as a psychometrician, uh, specifically in adaptive testing algorithms. So psychometrician, that wasn't anything that I saw when I was going through my, my college studies. How did you become a psychometrician? <laughs> Yeah, I think people fall into it uh, always through something else. Either they get into language teaching and then somehow get into language assessment or something like that. So myself, I was uh, originally a psychology major as an undergrad, and I had uh, the great luck to have a wonderful mentor, uh, David Bishop, as my advisor as an undergraduate. Um, and he uh, showed me that uh, there was a, a lot of opportunities and cool things to do on the quantitative side of psychology, whether it's uh, uh, developing assessments or developing, uh, you know, employee selection models or how to analyze job performance or things like that. Um, so by my junior year of college, I knew that I wanted to either be a psychometrician or an IO psychologist with an emphasis on psychometrics. Oh, cool. So when we take a look at assessment and psycho psychometrics, oh, what in layman's terms, what, what value does it bring to the process? Uh, it tries to bring a lot of quantitative and scientific rigor to the assessment process. Um, so there's decades and decades of research on assessment that a lot of people aren't aware of, um, going back to even like the first employment exams, which were really like uh, the alpha and beta exams used in World War One uh, by the United States Army. Uh, and you know, I just had this I talked with somebody the other day with a, a lead that came into our website that was like. Somebody told me I need a psychometrician. That sounds like magic. What does it do? Yeah. Um, and I had to explain to him, yeah, we analyze data and try to figure out, you know, what's fair. What are questions that are too confusing? How do you balance between two different exam forms? If you've got an exam for this year and a different exam next year, how do you make sure that the scores are comparable? Uh, these are uh, quantitative questions, and uh, psychometricians are here to help solve them. Yeah, that's great. I think back years ago, I was uh, an economics instructor at San Jose State. And they told me, here's the book, go teach and design your own tests. And I was just writing test questions. I didn't, you know, it's like from what I knew of, of you know, my test taking experience. And the only way I knew a question was bad was I get people yelling at me. You know, so it, it would have <laughs> yes. been, been great to have a tool to, uh, to be able to evaluate whether or not they were good questions. Because I never knew if I was a good uh, question writer. Uh, so that seems to add a lot of value. What would you? Uh, what kind of advice would you give to somebody who was in college and thinking about becoming a psychometrician? Uh, I would say two things. Uh, number one, uh, learn to code, um, and I don't just mean R because I still don't consider R to be real code. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's it's very slow and very clunky. Uh, teach yourself C plus plus Java .NET whatever it is uh, that makes sense for you. Uh, Python's another one. And number two, how to get into AI and machine learning, um, which uh, probably doesn't need to be told to anybody these days because yeah. they're such buzzwords. Yeah. Uh, but I didn't realize it myself until you know after I was you know completed with graduate school and realized that oh yeah this is the kind of stuff I've been doing and I'd love to take it farther um, and you know study up and uh, look at what those are and you'd be surprised as what just how much out there counts as AI and machine learning that you don't necessarily think of. Yeah, yeah, there's there's a lot of that going on. So. Um, great. Um, another question. I'm trying to try to light this up a little bit and learn about people personally. Uh, so you're you're in Minnesota, right? Mm -hmm. Tell me about your favorite Minnesota moment. Something that maybe the rest of us in the other 49 don't know about. Oh gosh. Jeez. <laughs> uh, well, I'm originally from Wisconsin, but I've been here for 20 years now, so I guess I'm Minnesotan. Uh, I'd say probably one of the, the best moments was I was mountain biking up north um, and I, I was going down the trail and this owl silently swoops up a, above me mm -hmm. and is flying down the trail ahead of me because it's a clear spot through the trees and flies ahead of me for maybe 20 seconds and like it's like in my pace car and it was just so beautiful and it stuck with me ever since yeah yeah you don't you don't get that in a lot of different places that's amazing so okay Nate what well, thank you this is five minutes with and uh, we're out for today